All right, today I want to talk about two global methods, parse int and parse float. Now, to understand what these are doing, you have to understand what the difference is between an integer and a float. Now, an integer is simply a number, a number that does not have a decimal place. So, one, two, three. There's no decimal, there's no numbers coming after it. A float is a decimal, or is a number that has a decimal and digits that come after it. At its most simple, that's the difference between integer and float without getting into what floating point numbers are, just visually. That's the difference between them. An integer has no decimal place, a float does. Now, the methods that we're going to look at here, parse int and parse float, these are methods that exist at the global level within JavaScript. So we can call parse int to take any string like this or a number that has a decimal like this. So take a float or a string and extract the integer part of it. So let's do an example here. We've got parse int. We're going to call that method and we're going to pass in this variable here, my string int. So my string int. There we go. I'm going to call the console log method. I'm going to pass in my string int to this. So this number right here. What I get back is 456. So it's the same as this, but this is a number. So why is that important? Well, oftentimes you're going to be getting values that come from the query string or come from a form field or come from something that a user has typed someplace else. That value could be in JSON as well, a JSON data file where somebody put quotation marks around the numbers. You need to deal with it as if it were a number, but the value that you're getting is a string. So although this looks like a number, because it's wrapped in quotation marks, JavaScript sees that as a string. It's no different than the letters ABC inside of there. It is a string value. We need to convert it from the string into a number. And that's what the parse methods are doing. Parse int takes the string and turns it into a number. So let's try the second one here. Address. Oops not capitalized. There we go. So I'm going to do a parse int on this value right here. If we clear that and run it, there we go. We get the 456 coming out again. So it looks at this string, starts at the beginning and says, yep, that's a number, that's a number, that's a number. Oh, okay. Space, that's not a number. So I will stop here. This is the value that's coming back, the 456. So that gave us the 456. If we do parse float, we get the same value, the 456. So it doesn't force there to be a decimal. Parse float will give you back an integer. If an integer is what you have there, it gives you back the integer value. It doesn't say, hey, you need to have a decimal for me to work. It just starts that way. All right, so let's do a parse float on my string float there, my str float. There we go. So we extract 345.456 and that's where it stops because you cannot have multiple decimals within a number. So it takes this and says that, that is this float. Everything else we're just going to throw away. Same thing with cost. It's going to look at this big thing and say one, two, okay, there's my first decimal, nine, nine, space, forget the space, 1299 will be what we get back from that. Change this to cost. And there's our 1299. So we are getting back the value that we expect. Now, if I was to do parse int on cost, so instead of float, we're going to do an int. There we go. We get the 12. So we have 1299 versus 12. This is an integer. This is a float. Float will allow you to have that first decimal place and whatever numbers come after it until there is no longer a digit. And that's it. That is parse float and parse int. Um, 
Remember these methods when you are working with user input. When you're getting something out of a query string, when you're getting something out of a user filled in form or out of JSON data, if you are not 100% convinced and assured that every value coming out of the JSON that's supposed to be a number does not have quotation marks, then treat it as if it does. Run the parse in, run the parse float, get the value back as a number. That way you can treat it as a number and do things like add other numbers to it, multiply it, carry out other mathematical functions on it. All right, hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. I'll leave a link to this file so you can play around with it and experiment with the different methods uh, down in the description, link to the code gist. And as always, thanks for watching.